Okay, we've left off on our keyframe that matches the middle of my rough storyboard, the idea, getting my little Psyduck guy fully frozen. I have all those keyframes here. I created some additional keyframes between number four and five to slow down that freezing process. And now I get to have new actions happen. So the sun starts to appear and starts to thaw out the frozen block. So the next frame is number six here that I'm working on. So I'm going to work from the bottom up. And I can duplicate the background. And then I can brighten it up a little bit using direct adjustments. I'm going to use color balance. And I'm going to start taking the blue down again. Remember, I, I kept increasing the blue as it got colder. But now we want the sun to start coming up. Maybe upping the red a little bit just in the shadows. That'll be a nice subtle, subtle shift. The clouds, which I have at 100% opacity here, they're going to start to fade again. My character is still frozen stiff. So I don't even need to move the character at all. But I might want to composite just a little bit more ice. So I have this little asset, this little ice cap. And I will use Control T. And I will stretch it down just a little bit extra. Finally, I'll cover up that eye. And also fade it out a little bit. And maybe play with its color. I'm going to take use hue saturation, and I'm just going to take some of that that blue away. So it's just kind of a little fringe on the ice. Even as the sun is coming out, this is in my storyboard where I have the most ice on my creature. And maybe because of that, I can even make the other layers of ice just a little bit more opaque. So they feel a little bit more solid before I start thawing them out. Yeah, I like those kind of striations in there. Okay, next. Moving up, what do I do with the atmosphere? I'm just going to move it a little bit. Keep it going, frame to frame. And then the ice crystals, I'll swap them again so they look like they're moving, but I'm going to take them down quite a bit. Oh, wrong layer. And that really helps us see the ice a little bit better, too. So this is kind of revealing the ice. I'm also noticing that the ice is pretty soft there. So for this keyframe, I might sharpen that. And just like you can do Gaussian Blur, you can do a filter that's called Smart Sharpen. It relies a lot on the computer to be able to detect edges. But if it sees a lot of contrast, you can see it will it will sharpen it up. Now for screen resolution, that works pretty well. For printing, it, it tends to do kind of a sloppy job when you look up close to the pixels. But for screen resolution, works great. So if we zoom in and see what that looks like, you can see kind of the sharpness that it added. But it's a little fake looking. But that's okay. We're doing just a GIF animation. We're not hired by LucasArts quite yet. And then I have uh, the ice on the ground. Remember, all these assets are things you're playing with. 
I'm going to go ahead and leave that for now because it's not thawing out yet. We're just introducing the sun. And then last, I have this kind of haze over the ice, and I'm just going to move that a little bit, but still keep that atmosphere in there. Okay. Now, I need to introduce something new in the atmosphere, which is the sun. So, I just want it to kind of flood with light. And so this is a good reminder of what we were doing last time. I'm just going to do a Google image search. And I'm going to look for, let's see, sun-filled sky. Probably not the best way to phrase it. We shall see. And what I want is actually like beams of light, but not necessarily the the round sun because I don't want to have to show the sun moving. I just want it to show it kind of peeking through the clouds. So I'm actually going to go right to Pixabay, which you can also find under links in the course, because I I like that Pixabay. I can just trust the quality of everything, even if I'm just working at screen resolution. And I'm going to look for sunny sky. So it's basically something like this is what I want. That could be pretty. It's a little colorful. And I'm going to use it as an overlay mode, much like I did the ice crystals. Hmm, that's pretty nice too. Like the subtlety of it. So at any time while you're compositing, you might decide to bring in new components for your animation. And there are 60 something pages of sunny skies in Pixabay. So there's, there's lots I could potentially look through and, and search. And this one makes a lot of sense. It's just very direct. And I could fade that in and out, you know, behind the clouds. So let's go with that. It's pretty basic. And because we didn't get to do the cloud creature assignment, this is the kind of reference images for the cloud creature that I would download and steal from to make my creature out of clouds with. And you can see in the YouTube some demos of that if you are curious. But I, I use the same skills to build the ice around my creature that I would have used to build a cloud version of my creature for assignment four that we had to skip. Yeah, that's nice, but it's just, it's, it's too subtle for GIF animation. And this is a little just too, I don't know, maybe too much of a focal point. So I think, I think I found a good one. I went ahead and downloaded it. It's in my downloads folder. I want to move it into my folder assets. So I can always get it back if I need to. Then I'm going to go to photo P and I'm going to add it as a new element in my atmosphere folder. And it's a really big reference, but when you bring it in to the raster program, it's going to come in at the size of your, your pixel window. So I hit return to place it. And then in order to erase away from it, I need to right click and rasterize it. And now it's, it's real pixels within this space. Then I'm going to use my 100% eraser. I'm going to set the brush to be 0% hardness and quite large. This is all just reviewing of compositing tricks. I'm going to erase away the hard edge at the bottom here. 
I don't really need that cloud. But I do want that kind of bright light. Okay. And then how can I blend this in? Well, I could always just take opacity down. It's like the sun's coming up over the mountain. But that blue is a little strong, right? So there's a few options. I could use the magic wand, try to select all the blue and softly erase away. I can do that maybe a tiny bit if I click on uh, uncheck contiguous with the magic wand, click on the blue, hold down shift, click it a few places. But you see there's so many different blues because it's gradated. It might look kind of weird. And then I could use my eraser, once I've selected it, go with a lower opacity and soften some of those blues. But I'm going to end up with a lot of hard edges then that I then also need to soften. So better to probably play with direct adjustments and try to get the lighting to match a little bit better. So if I go directly to color balance, I can shift that blue to something warmer by lessening the blue in the shadows, in the midtones, and in the highlights. You see now it's starting to, to suit my, my image a little bit. And then I can also kind of take down the green because it's looking very green and a little bit of the red. So it just becomes kind of a purer light. So I'm happy with that. And then Instead of just fading in and out, which is the easiest way to animate this sun coming in, I can also play with blending styles, right? Or blending modes. Instead of normal, I can try something like soft light, but that's very soft. Pin light, which is very strong but sometimes these can help. Overlay. Overlay is kind of nice. It really shows those clouds. So maybe I shift from overlay eventually back to normal as the sky clears up. So let's start with overlay. And because we're just introducing the sun here, I'm gonna take the opacity way down. Maybe one third, 33%. Okay. So with all of that, I can look at my last keyframe that I saved. I can compare the two. Oh, I notice I have a little bit of a jog there in the keyframe. I might have to crop them all down before I'm done, but that's fine. So comparing these, it gets warmer. He gets frozen a little bit more. The sky starts to brighten up. That makes sense for my next keyframe. It's a shift, but not a huge shift. So what do I do? First, I save it as it is, because now this has new assets, new layer attributes. And then I'm gonna say file export as a JPEG. It's gonna to come to downloads. Bring it in and I label it keyframe six. All right, so now that I have all those keyframes that take me through my first two rows, it's a good time to run an animation test. So to do that, if you look in the assignment, where we post it, it gives you a link to the a site called gifmaker.me. This is what I'll do at the beginning of the next video. So right where we post our assignment, you will see that link. You will also see it in our links page. 
of the class. So if we op open that up, 